Hi, this is Simon from Hokit News and today we're revisiting something quite familiar. The successor to the Akara G2, namely the G2H. Can you guess what the H stands for? Keep watching to find out. So starting with the box and as you can see this is from China although the G2H name is visible. It also has the HomeKit logo along with four little circles to indicate colour options which are navy, yellow, red and basic white. Both sides of the box have icons to represent the features of the G2H and the box also has the name of the camera in seven different languages which could be a hint of an international release later on, fingers crossed. That aside, there's not much else other than this is a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi device, so let's see the device itself. If it wasn't already obvious, I went with the navy colour option and it's certainly well finished with a matte texture, making it a lot less shiny and more premium looking than you might expect. Still, it's what it's capable of rather than the colour, so here are some of the specs. So it's compatible with Apple HomeKit of course. It also works with HomeKit secure video out of the box. It has a 140 degree field of view and night vision. It's got a built-in HomeKit compatible Zigbee 3 hub which is fantastic. It has a micro SD card slot for local recording, an adjustable stand with a magnetic base, two-way audio functionality, 1080p streaming and recording via HomeKit secure video. It has alarm functionality via the Akara app a built-in pixel-based motion sensor and an option to do continuous recording via the SD card in the Akara Home app. If you're already an owner of the original G2 without HomeKit support, hopefully you'll agree with me that it was and still is a very decent and capable camera with a ton of features including the adjustable base along with other features that have been carried over to the G2H. Now visually the G2H is identical to the G2 apart from the colour options and HomeKit of course and it does feel like a nice and compact but also very sturdy piece of equipment. There's not much to see on the G2H, but there is a button on the top that serves multiple functions along with a microphone below the rather large lens. You also get the HomeKit code printed on the base of the stand as opposed to a sticker, so there's not much chance of losing that fortunately. The base of the G2H does allow the camera to be placed in a variety of positions, although they're always static as there's no motor for the camera to move automatically. Now you can see here on the underside of the G2H the SD card slot, a reset hole and the two mechanisms for adjusting the camera's position. Now on the subject of um, SD cards and external memory, as you can see here I've already got a 32GB microSD card installed. Now the official spec for the camera does state that the maximum size memory for this option is 32GB, although I have heard that the camera is capable of larger volumes. So what else is in the box aside from the camera? Well you get a Chinese manual as expected, so Google Translate at the ready there a micro USB to USB cable which is roughly two meters or six and a half feet long and a standard USB power adapter with type A North American style two pin plug. Finally you get a SIM card pin in case you need to reset the device and a metal plate and double sided sticker for mounting the camera to a wall or ceiling. The base of the camera is magnetic so you just need to affix the plate to a surface with either screws or the sticker itself and then the camera magnetically grips to that metal plate. Now because the base of the camera is also magnetic you can simply attach it to most magnetic surfaces without needing the plate at all. Here I'm able to attach the camera to the side of our fridge freezer and adjust it accordingly. For comparison's sake this is my G2 camera, the white one next to the G2H. As you can see they do look identical. Now it would have been great for owners of the G2 to get an update for HomeKit support but given the processing power needed for cameras in iOS 13 and in 14 it's simply not possible. Now the camera I've got here is from China so to take advantage of the hub and SD card options I need to first install it in the Akara app set to the China server. Now this involves resetting the device, pairing it to your Wi-Fi network which involves using the camera to scan a QR code generated by the app itself and then finally naming it and adding it to a room as is standard. 
If you're new to Acara products, you'll be happy to know that the Acara app is actually quite good and adding devices is very simple. Now, even though renaming the device and placing it in a room is done in the Acara app, you will have to do this again in the Home app initially. After that, you'll then be asked to bind it to HomeKit, which then proceeds to go through the typical procedure of scanning the HomeKit code and adding it to a room, etc. Now, as this is compatible with HomeKit Secure Video, you'll automatically get the option to set streaming and recording options if you have the appropriate level of iCloud support, with a 200 gigabyte plan being the minimum requirement for one camera to work with HomeKit Secure Video. The camera also has a pixel-based motion sensor built in, so these two services in total will be exposed in the Home app as separate devices. You can separate these out later if you wish, of course. Now, as you can see here, I still have to set up the name and the room for these devices, as well as set them to favorites if required. But once that's all done, you do end up going back into the Acara app, although it gives you the option to go straight back into the Home app to see that the camera is working. And as you can see here, we've got the camera working fine in the Home app. Even though it's working with HomeKit Secure Video, nothing has happened yet, so there's no timeline to see at the moment. Just as a quick example of the camera working under different lighting environments, you can see yours truly here demonstrating the camera under three different lighting conditions. And just so you know, all the footage you see here is exported from HomeKit Secure Video from within the Home app. All recordings via HomeKit Secure Video are in 1080p. Recordings to the SD card are at 720p. Manual recordings via the Acara app are 1080p. And snapshots taken from the live stream are also 1920 by 1080 pixels. All videos are at 24 frames per second. When it comes to functions in the Acara app, you really have a lot of options, many of which are available directly on the camera's user interface. Now this includes putting the camera to sleep or awake, initiating two-way audio, as well as taking instant recordings and snapshots. You also have access to the recording timeline and you can even set the streaming quality if you so wish. One minor bugbear is that putting your phone into landscape mode doesn't automatically make the camera stream also go into full screen mode, so you do have to press a specific icon. As already mentioned, the G2H does have a built-in Zigbee 3 hub, and as you can see here, I've already added a wireless switch to the hub, which is also exposed to HomeKit. There are further settings for customizing your camera, which include turning the status light on or off and adjusting the default volume for the camera's speaker, which might be useful if you use this camera as a baby monitor, for example. You can choose whether to have a time and date watermark on your recordings, as well as rotate the camera image. You can even set options for night vision and also use a lens correction option, which I'll show you later. With the image rotation option, you can flip the image vertically or horizontally, which is handy if you want to suspend the camera from a ceiling, for example. For SD card recording, you have three options, which are stop recording, activity detection recording, or record continuously, which I can see being quite popular with some people. If you want to use motion detection for your recordings, you just need to activate that option. When active, you also have the option to select areas of the video feed to be actively looking for motion, with the image being broken down into a grid of 24 squares, each of which can be individually turned on or off. This section also lets you adjust the motion sensitivity as well as get notifications when motion is detected. You can also set the camera to record if it hears what are deemed abnormal sounds, which might be a door being kicked or a window being broken. The album management section is where manual recordings, snapshots or video messages are kept for quick access. I did warn you there are lots of options in this app. Anyway, there is another image related option which allows for the camera's lens distortion to be sort of corrected. So it has a less of a fisheye lens appearance, which is quite subtle and won't be immediately obvious unless you're looking very carefully. 
We'll hop over to the Home app now, and if you're using HomeKit Secure Video, in addition to the live feed, you do get a recording timeline at the bottom and further settings at the top of the screen. When it comes to the gateway, as it's HomeKit compatible, many Zigbee devices from Acara can be added, which include smart bulbs, motion sensors, vibration sensors, smart locks, switches, door sensors, curtain motors, and even smart plugs. If you're interested in controlling some additional aspects of the camera, you can always use Siri shortcuts and here are some of the basic controls available with this particular option. Although I've tried to cover as much as I can with this great little device, I'm going to leave it to those of you wanting to explore what is already becoming a highly interesting camera for HomeKit users anyway, not least of all for its hub functionality, which is quite unique given the amount of cameras that have come out recently. I for one love it and can't think of any cons, so it gets the thumbs up from me, but you can check out Eric Yao's written review on this product at homekitnews.com. So for now, I'll see you in the next one.